morning, everyone. Thanks for the opportunity for speaking. Um, I'm going to give a, just an overview of some work that we're just starting in Oxford, Oxfordshire in the region, but also is, is work that the NHS is doing as a whole. Um, I've titled this Open Access for Population Health, so I think the open you know, relates to the conversations we had earlier. It's in two ways. It's technically open, and we'll talk about that, but it's also open in terms of the opportunities for collaboration and for partnership, and, and hopefully we'll touch on that at the end and, and maybe afterwards in terms of discussions. Um, my background is as a neurosurgeon, so I'm about the least likely person to be involved in population health. But uh, as Alex said, I think the, the opportunity that I saw is that this is the way that we're going to transform healthcare because we really need to transform it to deliver the future uh, state that will be sustainable. I do two things. I work for the Oxford University Hospitals Trust. I also have a role in this program that works over the region close to Oxfordshire, and that's what I'll talk about. Uh, a quick bit of background, so uh, Oxford, uh, Oxford University Hospitals is an academic medical centre, it, it's large by UK standards, um, it's about a billion pounds of turnover a year across the, the county of Oxfordshire, which is about 700,000 people, but extends more broadly for uh, more specialist and complex conditions. Um, what I'm responsible is the innovation programme and the population health. And so in, in innovation, we're, we're building an innovation hub for frontline users with a, a user-centred design, a co-creation element to that. Um, we have a health community that's been funded through the European Regional Development Fund uh, to try and bring people together and do a bit of, sort of social movement theory around, uh, around how health and digital health can, can develop. Um, and of course, as you've heard, we have extremely strong academic partnerships with departments like the National Department for Population and Health and um, Primary Care, but also the Big Data Institute shown here. Um, and so I guess you know, we're in this kind of slightly bucolic land where we have this beautiful county and we have a high life expectancy, which is the crude measure that, that's used. But the reality of this, of course, is that actually we've got some pockets of incredibly high social deprivation, just as I think all of us have, and they relate to some incredibly poor health outcomes. And so we are thinking, how do we, how do we manage that? How do we change our health systems to be fit for the next 10 years? Um, and I guess that was the question we were talking about in the first session. Um, this slide's courtesy of one of our technology partners, which is, uh, which is Cerner, who provide our electronic healthcare record system. And, uh, and we, or certainly some of us in the system, believe that the only way to try and solve that problem is to have an integrated population health approach that incorporates all of the aspects of health, wellness and care, the social determinants as much as the medical uh, determinants and that siloed health care that Hassan was talking about has got to, got to go. Um, so how, how do we deliver on this? Um, well, this is the NHS's uh, view of, of how health care has to be fully transformed and there are a variety of things on there but I just highlight at the bottom that care is now around communities and people um, and I think that relates to that idea of population health being the core of, of what we deliver. Um, and so onto the meat of what we want to, to do and how maybe there's opportunities to collaborate. Um, the NHS has funded a number of regions to be local health and care record well, it used to be called exemplars, but we've, that's been, been dropped, so we're obviously not particularly exemplary yet. Um, but it, that has these three core elements to it that we're trying to deliver. Uh, proactive care, this integration of records that we heard about as a, as a blocker and the need for collaboration, and also the ability to, to deliver um, or to solve for the gaps in care that we currently have in most of the chronic diseases that we care for, which account for 70% of health and care, as you well know. Um, and one of the key elements of this, and, and so underlying that, that clinical need and that process need is essentially a, a technical need about, about integrating and linking data. So these local health and care record exemplar programmes, um, there are five that initially been funded. We in the Thames Valley in Surrey are, are one of those. We've had a s relatively small, by the scale of the challenge, amount of pump priming funding going in now at the moment. Um, uh, and that's covering at the moment 50% of the population or thereabouts, um, but the aim is that this will extend out and cover the whole of the UK population and be, a, be an opportunity for, for partnerships. Um, 
The region that I work in is the Thames Valley in Surrey. So, so that's down in the southeast of the UK. Um, it, it essentially surrounds London. And so um, we're in Oxford here, but one of the interesting things about this is that people don't stay in one location for all of their, their daily life. Um, and so you know, a lot of our patients, we've got probably about a million patients who flow into London and back out of London on a daily basis. And so how do we manage their care across all those different geographies and settings? Um, the LICA program, I won't go into this, we can talk about it maybe later in the panel. There are a whole number of issues that are required in terms of setting up that kind of infrastructure for, for shared care. Um, one of the things I just want to call out, again, for the possibility of collaboration is, is the ability to work with new and innovative vendors to deliver new and innovative healthcare solutions for people. Um, this you clearly can't read, but it, it, it is there to illustrate what our architecture is for the program. So we have a number of healthcare record systems at the bottom here, and these are coming from the different healthcare providers in our geography. They're feeding up into the core, which is this platform that we're developing. So that's being developed and will go live over the next 12 to 15 months. And the thing I wanted to just highlight by the red rings is that there are a number of touch points to that system which other providers, other organisations can work with us on and we really are looking for opportunities to work with people on. And, and they are specifically to be accessed through open API technologies. So this data, or the whilst there are a number of issues that we will, I'm sure, discuss about uh, how we access that and the governance and the security and the, the rights of citizens who are contributing their data. These are meant to be points where, for example, individual patients can access that data into their own systems, um, but also research bodies can access it uh, and also other providers who come into the marketplace. The other flip side of it, openness and, and maybe what we want to talk about is that, is that Oxford's uh, a great place for digital technology innovation. So there have been a, a large number of companies who have spun out of Oxford in the past uh, handful of years. And so we also want to try and find ways to, to work and collaborate with those, um, those companies with other, other healthcare systems and partners. And just making that a little bit concrete because I have to finish. Um, we, I mentioned APIs and, and to back to the title of the talk, so we are working uh, to develop a, a FIRE-based APIs, which many of you will know about, as the core standard for which we will have, make that data available. Specifically in Oxford, we're working using the smart technology and with our uh, vendor partner, Cerner. Um, and, and with all of this in the UK, we're working through standards-based organisations, so Interopen is a, is a body of uh, um, a number of vendors, providers, uh, etc., who are working to try and define these standards as we move forwards. And finally, just to finish to try and make it a little bit more concrete, this is the model proposed for what we're going to do in Oxford in this, which is to, to hold, host a centre where uh, applications, particularly for externally, can come in, work with our healthcare data, both the data from the hospital but also the rider region to develop their applications, to test that, to work with key opinion leaders, clinicians, but also with our patient population and our patient data, uh, and then work with the vendors to validate that so that they work with the actual systems and can be scaled nationally and also globally, uh, and then deploy live into the system. And just to finish, the final call on this is that we're uh, hoping to uh, apply through the EIT, European Institute for Technology Health Programme, uh, which closes at the end of this month, uh, with a collaborative bid. We've got some partners up in Scandinavia who are doing that, but we're very open for discussions with anyone else who's interested in partnering that kind of model. Thanks very much. <laughs>